Do you want to become a master of Azure and impress your boss, clients and colleagues? And do you want to pass the AZ-104 exam on the very first try and get certified as an Azure administrator? And if you answered yes to any of these questions, then this video is just for you. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this video series, I guide you through the real exam-like questions covering all the important concepts, topics and skills that you need to know to pass the AZ-104. And yes, there is a free PDF file waiting for you towards the end of this video. So watch the video till the very end. So why wait? Let's get started. So let's begin episode 16 with question number 106. Very interesting question, but equally controversial. There are so many variations of this question and even more answers. And that's why I have presented my logic. But in case you have a contradiction and you think some other option or some other solution is correct, then I would love to have a conversation. You can leave your views in the comment section and this way we can also help the other Azure learners. So let's start by reading the question. The question says that you have an Azure subscription that contains the following users in an Azure Active Directory tenant named contoso.onmicrosoft.com. So here my friends, you can see in this table, we are given with the users. We also have the roles and the respective scope. And to start with, we have user one who is the global administrator and the scope is Azure Active Directory. Similarly, we have user 2 who again is the global administrator, scope is the same and the user 3 is the user administrator, scope is once again Azure Active Directory and then we have user 4 who is the owner and the scope is Azure subscription. Now the question further says that the user 1 creates the new Azure Active Directory tenant named external.contoso dot on microsoft.com and you need to create a new user accounts in the external dot contoso dot on microsoft.com and the solution given is that you instruct the user for to create the user's account does this solution meet the goal yes or no and friends as i just said this question has so many variations and today with all the research i have collected four variations of the same question so let's go through all the variations and not only i will tell you the correct answer as per my perspective and also give you the logic why I picked that solution. And for now, this solution is not the correct solution. That's why no is the correct answer. So let's move on to the question number 107. Question exactly is the same. Let's read the solution. This time you instruct the user 3 to create the user account. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, this is not the correct solution. That's why no is the correct answer. And friends, as we move ahead and read more solution and more variation, it's very important that you keep reading these kind of question, understand the question, what are the scopes, what are the user roles are given in the question, because you will definitely get so many questions around the access policies in Azure. So that's why it's super important that all your concepts are very clear. Now let's move ahead. Question number 108, exactly the same question. Let's read the solution. The solution this time says that you instruct user 2 to create the user account. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this also is the wrong solution. That's why no is the correct answer. Now let's check out the fourth and the last variation of this question. The question exactly once again the same. Now let's read the solution. The solution says that this time you instruct the user 1 to create the user account. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And yes, my friends, this is the correct solution. That's why yes is the correct answer. Now, let me explain why I picked this solution or why I picked that user one can create the user account. But before I jump on to that, I would really request you and appreciate if you can please give this video a thumbs up. So friends, in order to answer these kind of questions, you have to understand few important points. First of all, in this question, you can see that the user one is the global administrator and also the scope is Azure Active Directory. But now you may be wondering the same is also true for the user two, who also happens to be the global administrator and the scope is also the same Azure Active Directory. But there is one big difference between user one and user two. And that big difference is that the user one has created the Azure Active Directory tenant named external.contoso.onmicrosoft.com. And that makes the user one the default owner of this domain. Confused? Do not worry. Let me throw some more details on this. So here it comes as you can read that the user one is a global administrator of the contoso.onmicrosoft.com and as I just mentioned it is the user one who created the new tenant called external.contoso.onmicrosoft.com and that makes him the owner of that tenant or that domain. 
Now by default, my friends, the user who creates the organization is added as an external user in that organization and also assigned the global administrator role in that organization. And friends, the administrator such as user 2. Now, although as mentioned in the question, the user 2 is also the global administrator. But the point is that the user 2 still do not have any direct admin privileges on the new domain or the tenant created named external.contoso on Microsoft.com. And the only way the user 2 who also happens to be the global administrator can perform the action of creating new user on this external domain is that the user 1 needs to explicitly enable the user 2 with the correct access. So friends, I hope you understood the user 1 and the user 2 both are global administrator. But because the user 1 created this tenant, he becomes the owner as well. And that's why he is able to create the new user. But in case you have still some confusion, read the question once again and also let me know in the comment section and I will surely reply. Okay, so let's take one more question. Question number 110. The question says that you have a Microsoft 365 tenant and an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com. Now you plan to grant three users named user1, user2 and user3 access to a temporary Microsoft SharePoint document library named library1. And you need to create groups for the users. The solution must ensure that the groups are deleted automatically after 180 days. Which two groups should you create? And please note that each correct answer presents the complete solution and each correct selection is worth one point. And the options given are option A, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the assigned membership type. Option B, a security group that uses the assigned membership type. Option C, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the dynamic user membership type and option D, a security group that uses the dynamic user membership type and lastly option E, a security group that uses the dynamic device membership type. Okay, so let's check out the first correct answer and that is option A, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the assigned membership type. And then the second correct answer is option C, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the dynamic user membership type. And just to give you more details, you can set the expiration policy only for Office 365 groups in Azure Active Directory. And please note with the increase in the usage of Office 365 groups, the administrators and the users need a way to clean up the unused group. And friends, the expiration policies can help remove inactive groups from the system and make things cleaner. And in this documentation, you can understand how to configure the expiration policy for the Microsoft 365 groups. And this documentation tells you how to manage the life cycle of the Microsoft 365 groups. And as you can see, you can set the expiration policy only for the Microsoft 365 groups in the Microsoft Intro ID part of the Microsoft Intro. And friends, now that we are talking about Microsoft Intro, this is one area. Surely you will get some questions in Easy 134. So do not miss to read this documentation. The links are right there in the description box. And now friends to get the free PDF file for this episode. But before that, a humble request to check out our membership community area. It's a place where you can get more learning materials, PDF files with all the questions and the answers. And you can also directly connect with us. Okay, so in order to get the free PDF file for this episode, you have to send me the correct answers for the questions mentioned on your screen. But please remember these three important points. First, you must be subscribed to the channel, which is absolutely free for you, but a great way for us to expand and reach more audience. Secondly, the free PDF file is only available for the first three days of this video launch. So do spread the video to all your friends so that they can also take the advantage of free PDF files. And then the final third point, send in your answers to our email ID, connect us at the rate the tech blackboard .com. And friends, in case you love reading, increase your knowledge, read our blogs at techblackboard.com slash blog. And as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.